dystopian novel that looked at the future and assumed that it wouldn't be very long before the West was completely captive to totalitarianism. That is ruled by a dominant force where you have only two classes, the ruling class and all the people who are subjected to them. In the, in the Brave New World, he portrayed what life would be like. It was about 17 years later that George Orwell, another devout atheist, wrote 1984, another dystopian novel that looked at the future. And uh, just examining those uh, recently in my own thoughts, I drew out of those two pictures of totalitarianism in the future of the West what are pretty amazing, prescient insights from a couple of atheists. Totalitarian rule, both of them say, is essentially the absolute political, social slavery of everyone. We are used to what is called chattel slavery, C-H-A-T-T-E-L. Chattel slavery is when one person owns another person. Political slavery is when the state owns everybody. But the effect on the individual is identical. We have um, come to the place in American history where we hate chattel slavery. In fact, we've created a massive movement, racial movement now based upon past chattel slavery. People rise to noble heights to condemn chattel slavery while at the same time they are willingly becoming slaves of the state. And the end is exactly the same. Somebody owns you and you give up your freedom. Now what elements of uh, society and politics produce this willing kind of state slavery? Drawing from both um, Orwell and Huxley, this is what they say totalitarianism would look like. Here are the necessary elements. One, a crisis. A crisis puts freedom in danger because a crisis elevates government control. And the more severe the crisis and the more control the government gets, the more freedoms begin to disappear. Secondly, the collective is more important than the individual. The greater good is the good of society, not your good. We don't care what you want or what you think, we've got to stop global warming. We don't care what your freedoms are, the things that you desire and you want. You can't say that. You can't believe that. You can't do that because the collective is far more important than the individual. The advance of the LGBTQ is far more important on the social side for the good of society than anything you think about that. So the collective dominates the individual. Everybody is forced into the collective. Thirdly, you need a mass psychosis. You need a mass psychosis, something that makes everybody afraid, like a plague, like a pandemic, like masks that create a greater threat than the giving up of freedom. People rushed into giving up their freedoms when there was a threat that created a mass psychosis keep up the deception so they continue to believe the lies and you escalate control. Number four, control information. Control what people hear and what they therefore believe. And the way to control information is the following, create confusion, send out all kinds of diverse signals so that nothing is really clear. So you're creating a kind of acceptable irrationality, a kind of madness. Censor 
what you don't want. Control people by technology and media. Number five, and this is a dominant feature of both of these uh, novels, hedonism. Turn loose all kinds of immorality everywhere. Create a situation of unhindered sexual lust. Let people be completely lost in pleasure. No boundaries on any kind of sexual behavior. Fill the culture with pornography because as long as they are unhindered in their sexual lusts, as long as they are lost in hedonistic pleasure, they're not thinking. Number six, feed them mindless, accessible, irrelevant, distracting, nonstop entertainment. So they live in a world of fantasy and emotional stimulation rather than thought. Number seven, make drugs available to everyone because drugged people or drunk people are harmless. And number eight, this is critical. If you want to take over an entire population, isolate them from each other. Because when you isolate them from each other, you control the narrative. You take them away from the examples of something different. That is what atheists came up with as the pathway to dystopian totalitarianism in which people distracted, dumbed, downed, drugged give up their freedoms. Now what is the biggest threat to this? The biggest threat to this is pretty simple. Some other authority than the government. And by the way, don't look to politicians to fix this. They're the problem. They're the powerful. They're not going to fix this. One non-politician tried to fix it, <laughs> but he couldn't get any help from all the politicians. So you can't turn to them to fix it. They're the powerful. They're the elite power hungry people who just want more power. What is the threat to them? Another authority. In fact, another authority that is a greater authority, that is a transcendent authority, that is an eternal authority, and that has revealed Himself clearly on the pages of Holy Scripture. So who is their greatest enemy? God. What is the book that they most fear? The Bible. But the freedom we're talking about here and the freedom that we want to proclaim to the world is not political freedom or social freedom or psychological freedom or philosophical freedom or scientific freedom. It's spiritual freedom. Very popular to talk about truth and freedom, and none of it matters if it all has to do with life in this world. You watch people in the search for truth, it's a, it's a noble claim that's so totally corrupted and compromised, it's lost all meaning. You can't be sure you're even going to get a fair fill-in-the-blank trial because you don't have a culture of people who care what the truth is. It reminds me of Kafka's. Franz Kafka, the German existential surrealist from 1880s who uh, wrote The Defiant Fisherman. I love the story. A man picks his way past rubble, scorched earth. The whole city has been bombed out. He finds a huge deserted apartment building that's standing there, Kafka says, and he enters the door. He climbs the cement stairs high into the building, pokes his way down a dark hall to the end of the hall, turns into a little bathroom, finds a man sitting on the sink fishing in the tub in a completely bombed out city. This is a solitary fisherman, says Kafka, and there's no water in the tub. And so the figure in Kafka's picture says, you're not going to catch anything there, to which defiant fisherman says, I know, and keeps on fishing. Such is the futility of searching for the truth where you're never ever going to find it. 
The only truth that's going to liberate your soul and liberate you freely from sin forever is the truth of the gospel. The world, 2 Timothy 3, 7, is ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is humanity's futile effort. They're all Kafka's defiant fishermen. They're, they've got their line in an empty tub. The truth, says Ephesians 4, 21, is in Jesus. Not only does the Bible say the truth is in Jesus, the Bible says in John 14, 6, Jesus is the truth. John 1, 14, He's full of grace and truth. He's the teacher of truth, John 16. Those who believe in Him and His Word are set free from sin. Truth will make you free.